Hello again and welcome to part 3, Procedural Analysis. In part 2, we started this series of discussing strategies for sequencing learning experiences. Well, this is the second strategy of that series, Procedural Analysis. Once again, we'll start with an introduction, explain the process, and also show you an example. So let's begin. In procedural analysis, an educator would mirror the sequence of steps in which the task will actually be performed. Now here's a point to be noted. Even though it is recommended that procedural analysis be used for tasks that are in the psychomotor domain, do keep in mind that in real life psychomotor is not in isolation. Psychomotor tasks could have cognitive and affective components to that. So no need to discount that. What's important here is to sequence learning in the order in which the task will be performed. So if you had an affective and a cognitive element, take care of them. Once you reach the psychomotor piece, follow the procedure and the steps within. So use the sequence of steps that are in the procedure for performing that psychomotor task. Make sense so far? So let's think for a moment. How would you apply procedural analysis? Well, you would first determine which procedure is appropriate. Then identify the specific steps of the, that procedure. And finally, apply those steps in the order of performance. Example, from all the tasks that an archer needs to perform, archer as in bow and arrow, so from all the tasks that an archer needs to perform, if your analysis leads you to one that they're not performing well, that's the one you'd want to teach, right? Like, why would you teach something they already know? In this case, I selected hitting a target with an arrow. Your next step would be to list the steps in the right sequence. Take a few moments to read the list that's on your screen. Okay, so when it is time to teach, you would teach each step individually, depending on the knowledge gap. For example, if the learners do not know how to physically lift a bow and quiver, you would teach that. However, if they don't know how to identify a bow and quiver, you would address that cognitive aspect first. Does that sound straightforward? That actually is procedural analysis. That's all there is to it. So as you conduct, as you study um, other sequencing strategies, you might come across strategies which combine hierarchical task analysis and procedural analysis. For example, the Langevin model of task analysis. That's a classic. It combines both of them. For reference reading, you can also visit Don Clark's website. The link is available on our Blackboard. Well, this brings us to the end of this three-part series on sequencing learning experiences. I hope you enjoyed learning about it. Take a few moments to jot down any questions that come to mind and you're welcome to send them to me. My name is Ibrahim Chutani and I'll see you next time with a brand new podcast on a brand new topic. Until then, bye-bye.